Line number 20. Favorite races. Uh, oh. Charlie, that's not politically correct. You see, Charles Darwin's book came out in 1859. We still had slavery in this country. But not in Britain where Darwin lived. Hoven knows that. Darwin was using the word race to mean species, not ethnicity. Line number 21. Charles Darwin was a racist to the extreme. From Descent of Man. But the most weighty of all the arguments against treating the races of man as distinct species is that they graduate into each other, independently in many cases, as far as we can judge, of their having intercrossed. This diversity of judgment does not prove that the races ought not to be ranked as species, but it shows that they graduate into each other and that it is hardly possible to discover distinctive characters between them. And from Voyage of the Beagle, on the 19th of August, we finally left the shores of Brazil. I thank God I shall never again visit a slave country. Picture to yourself the chance, ever hanging over you, of your wife and your little children being torn from you and sold like beasts to the first bidder. It makes one's blood boil, yet heart tremble, to think that we Englishmen and our American descendants, with their boastful cry of liberty, have been and are so guilty. Line number 22. Darwin thought that women were inferior. He said a married man would be a poor slave worse than a Negro. Uh, Kent, Darwin was married to a very devout Christian woman. Hoven gives as his source the autobiography of Charles Darwin, but searching the Project Gutenberg copy for this text comes up empty. From Descent of Man. With women, marriage at too early an age is highly injurious, for it has been found in France that twice as many wives under 20 die in the year as died out in the same number of the unmarried. The mortality, also, of husbands under 20 is excessively high, but what the cause of this may be seems doubtful. Lastly, if the men who prudently delay marrying until they can bring up their families in comfort were to select, as they often do, women in the prime of life, the rate of increase in the better class would only be slightly lessened. Line number 23. Evolution is a philosophy of life that says there is no God. We got here by one chance. Wrong on two counts. Evolution does not preclude a creator, only certain accounts of how he might have gone about his work. It is also not blind chance, but on the application of physical laws. Line number 24. The philosophy of evolutionism is what drove Karl Marx. You see, we would not have communism today if it had not been for evolution succeeding in the middle 1800s. Uh, Kant, the Communist Manifesto was published in 1848, 11 years before Darwin published Origin of Species. Line number 25. You see, evolution teaches that only the strongest survive. No, it doesn't. In an environment where strength isn't an issue, the strong might very well die out to the faster, or the more nimble, or the smaller. It all depends on the environmental pressures. Line number 26. Evolution is largely responsible for what happened to the Indians. The Trail of Tears was in the 1830s, two decades before Origin was published. Line number 27. Hitler wrote the book Mein Kampf. You ought to read Mein Kampf and see how many times Hitler refers to racial crossing, superior races, or higher races. The major theme of the book is Germans are a superior race. If Kent isn't lying about having read Mein Kampf, then he's lying by omitting the fact that the book makes numerous references to God and how Hitler believed he was doing God's work by eliminating the Jews. Of course, if Hitler had really been a Darwinist, he would have done nothing at all, because he would have believed that natural selection would have taken care of the Jews without him doing a thing. Line number 28. The Great Pyramid is positioned perfectly north, south, east, and west. We have no idea how they built it. We could not build it today. The Great Pyramid is off by over 5 degrees. Any cursory study will show how it was built, and yes, we could build it much more efficiently today, although we wouldn't have any purpose at all for doing so. Line number 29. The Great Pyramid is a neat subject to study. If you go up to the King's Chamber you will notice an empty tomb with a red granite coffin. The coffin has the exact dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. Using the most generous length for a cubit, the Ark was at most 53 inches on its longest side. That's less than four and a half feet. 
The sarcophagus in question is over six feet long. Line number 30. What about Tangia? Were the continents ever connected? School children are still being taught this theory. The only evidence to support this theory is that Africa and South America look as if they would fit together. Wrong. We can measure continental drift, see the evidence for thrust faulting in the past, observe the trenches in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, and see the correlations in the geography of separate continents that were once together, all of which act to confirm this. Line number 31. Camels have been found at the North Pole. How, Kent? There's no land at the North Pole! Line number 32. Today, the Earth is leaning over about 23 and one half degrees, which is what causes our seasons. By the way, the seasons as far as spring, winter, and harvest are not mentioned in the Bible until after the flood. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. Line number 33. The textbooks state that it took billions of years to form the Grand Canyon. No, Kent. Six million years. Line number 34. Carbon dating is based on the assumption that the amount of C14 in the atmosphere has remained constant through all time. Absolutely false. Science has a number of different techniques for determining the amount of C14 in the atmosphere over the past 45,000 years, the practical limit of carbon dating. Line number 35. Don't fall for the statement they proved it is so many millions of years old, based on carbon dating. Yes, don't fall for it, because only creationist liars like Kent Hovind make that statement. As I said, carbon dating only goes back about 45,000 years. Line number 36. How does one measure the distance to a star? The farthest that we can get away on Earth is 8,000 miles. Parallax measurements can be taken six months apart when Earth is opposite its orbit around the Sun, increasing that distance to 186 million miles. Line number 37. Even Charles Darwin said in his book right here on page 217, Charlie said, to suppose that the eye could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd. Charlie very much was confused about the human eyeball because it is so complex. Blatant quote mining. Reading the rest of the chapter shows quite clearly that Darwin believed the eye evolved and posited a mechanism for it doing so, which has been shown to be quite accurate by modern findings. Line number 38. The Japanese trawler Zuyo Meru caught a dead near New Zealand in 1977. Even other creationists acknowledge the finding of every scientist who observed the carcass, all of whom say it's a dead shark. Line number 39. 1963 is when prayer and Bible reading was taken out of the American school system. 1963 is when violent crimes began to increase. You know there has been almost a 1,000% increase in violent crimes since 63. His chart only goes back to 1950 and doesn't show that in the 1930s, crime was even larger. He also doesn't include the drop in crime rate starting around 1990. Line number 40. Look, fellow, if you believe in evolution, you got a much worse problem than I do. You have to get two cells to evolve out of the rocks in the same place of the opposite sex at the same time in history. Hoven knows perfectly well that cells do not come from rocks, since rocks do not contain organic chemicals. He also knows there was no sex, as bacteria do not reproduce sexually. Sexual reproduction took billions of years to evolve. If this conversation really did take place, as Hoven claims, the scientist would have laughed in his face. How can anyone trust this bozo or say that he is anything but a blatant liar?